Before we get started today, please have this URL open. So please open dbfiddle.com. So db-fiddle.com. This is similar. It's almost like a Rex tester. So I just posted the link in the, the URL in the chat. Um, it's similar to Rex tester, except for, for SQL, for structured query language, which is the programming language we'll be learning today. I know it seems crazy to learn a language in the last um, couple of lessons, but it it's actually quite easy. It's a lot like English, actually. Um, it, it just, yeah, it's, you'll see that it reads a lot like an English sentence, like almost how you would say the thing is how you do it in SQL. Um, and so it's not too difficult to wrap your head around. SQL is used for a lot of different things in the real world, guys. Basically, any programming job that you do, whether it's like or, or any sort of tech job that you do, whether it's like data analysis or web developments or machine learning or anything, will probably at some point require working with data in a way um, that's saved in something similar to, to what SQL allows you to do. So it's definitely a good thing to, to learn. So I think let's get started with this. And yeah, without further ado, let's jump in. So. SQL, Structured Query Language, is the language we use to make databases. So over in dbfiddle, we've already got a database for us. Um, if you didn't have a database, you would have to say create database, something like that. Um, and you can see the, the words are highlighted in blue there. You would have to say that if you if you didn't have a database already, but but they've given us a database so, so we can just start working with it. Okay. Because remember, a database is just a set of tables, right? It's a set of tables. Um, you can see there's two places we can type here in dbfiddle. So on the left, we have our schema. Um, schema is short for schematic. I don't know if you guys have heard that word before, schematic. It's almost like a blueprint or the design, okay? Like the architecture of the database. Um, so all of the different tables and columns and stuff that the, the database will have will go on the left here. And all of the queries that we write, so to actually work with data, to fetch data, to delete data, um, things like that, all of the queries will go on the right. Okay. So that's why we've got these two places to program. And you'll see it'll give us a nice visualization. It's, it's quite nice to work with. Um, okay. But so, yeah, the first thing we need to do, um, I know your book starts by like selecting things from a database and whatever, but I think it's more sensible from starting from the beginning, you know, like the first thing you have to do before you can work with data in a database is create the tables that is hold, that are holding the data. Okay, so we're going to start with that. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Now, you'll eventually see that a lot of SQL commands are like this. They're all very, um, as I mentioned, very English, English sounding. So the first command we are going to learn is create, create. So you can see I put create in bold there and every single new command is going to be put in bold to emphasize that that's the one that we're learning. So create table, create table. So what do you think create table does? Right? It makes sense, right? It creates a table. So you say create table, the name of the table you want to create. Um, and then you give it all of the columns and you tell it what the primary key is. Okay, that's all of that. None of those words should be too new to you. Um, if you were at last week's lecture, or if you if you caught up with the with the YouTube video, um, but we don't worry, we will we will go over it um, in some detail. I am actually going to open quickly last week's slides. So we are we're actually going to make uh, make the tables that we that we designed and stuff last week. So let me just open that up. Okay, here we are. Uh, let's get to a place where we have a nice table. Okay, yeah, let's, let's, uh, I think let's go with this one. Let's, let's in fact do the genre one. Okay, so we're going to do genre and book. Okay, genre and book. But let's just start with this, this one over here. We're going to create this table over here. Okay, I, we can leave out the genre ID column. So um, let's, we'll do, we'll do four columns, okay? 
We're going to do four columns just to save on some typing um, for now. Uh, but don't worry, we'll get to genre eventually. So we're just going to do ID, title, author, and genre. Okay. And the name of our table is going to be book. The name of our table is going to be book. So um, yeah, let's let's do that. Let's let's create this table over here, and we'll use that as our schematic. Okay. Cool. So I'm going to jump over to SQL, and this is the command we're doing. We're creating a table. Okay. So I'm going to say create table. Now you can see I'm doing this in caps, and guys, please do follow along. Maybe if you, I don't know if you have a second device or if you can split screen it on your on your laptop or whatever. Um, that could be cool. But, but however you can, please do follow along. So we're going to say create table. Notice that I'll always put the SQL commands in bold, or pretty much always. Any, any word that SQL recognizes, with one exception, I'm going to put in bold, just because that's the standard. That's pe how people do it. If you don't want to do that, you can just write create table. It will, it will work. But um, yeah, the, the standard is that SQL commands go in bold. Okay. So create table book. Okay, book. There we go. So that, that's going to create our table in a way. But, but obviously, you can see that this is not specific enough. Right? This is not specific enough. Oh, let me just double check. Okay, it's none of you guys messaging me, so I can leave that. Okay. So we've got create table book. That's going to go ahead and create a table. But that's not specific enough. We need to tell it what columns we want. <clears throat> So we have four columns, ID, title, author, and genre. So let's go ahead and create all of those four columns. Um, and we'll just do it in order. So I'm going to give myself some space here like that. Okay. I'm going to put a semicolon at the end of the command to tell SQL that that's the end of the command. Okay. So create table. And you give it the column name and the type. Okay, the column name and the type. So the name of the column and then the type. So we're going to say ID is the name of the first column, ID, right? Because that's the ID number of the book. What type is this? Now, guys, if we look at this type over here, so you see the ID column over here. He has the first question for you guys to make sure everyone's awake. If we look at this first column over here, guys, ID. If, if we were in C sharp, what type would this be? You see there's a one, a two, and a three. What type would that be in C sharp? Anyone know the answer to that? If we were working in C sharp, what type would we save this variable in? 100% Yusuf, nice, nicely done. We would indeed use an int. And actually that's no different in SQL. So in SQL, we're gonna say this is an ID int. Okay, it's an integer, there we go. So that's our first column. Okay, that's our first column. Um, all right. Our next column is title, right? So we're going to say um, between each column, we're going to put a comma. So we're going to say ID int. That's our first column, comma. And we're going to go to our next column. Our next column, its name is title. Title. Um, cool. Let's, let's look at the data that this column holds. So we've got the war poems of Siegfried Sassoon. Metamorphosis, Grimm's fairy tales. What type would this be, guys? What type would this um, field be if we were working in C sharp? <coughs> if we work, if we were working in C sharp, what type would we save that data in? Yusuf says string, and that's correct. Yeah, we would save this in a string. Okay, now in in SQL, it's a little bit different, although it is the same. So I don't know if any of you guys remember, back in like chapter three, I think it was, I told you guys that a string is, it's actually something else. It's representation in the computer is, is something else. Um, you guys remember arrays. So like if we think about what a string is, right? What is a string? Can someone describe it to me in a little bit more detail? And I don't mind if you guys guess a little bit, um, but let's try and like unpack this a little bit. What is a string? Hmm. <laughs> okay, maybe it is a bit of a tough question. 
But do you guys remember what an array is? You could say, hey, Chris, nice. Yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. So a string is an array of characters, right? An array of characters. That makes sense, right? Because we've got a bunch of characters and they're all like tacked on to each other, okay? So in, in SQL, they don't have the string data type, but they do have the character data, data type or char, um, as you say. So in SQL, instead of saying string, what we say is var char. And then you put two brackets there and you give it the number of characters that you want. So we're going to say 255 will be the maximum number of characters in this var char, okay, var char. So all this is saying is I want a list of characters that has 255 elements. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense to you guys because you know what an array is and you know what a character is, okay? So that's how we say string in, in SQL, okay? Because it's a list of characters, an array of characters, if you like. Okay, cool. So that creates title. Um, I think you guys can agree author will be the same, right? It's going to be a list of characters. You guys do remember when we were normalizing the database, there was the slight thing was like, what if a book had multiple authors? We're, we're not going to deal with that now. I am going to show you how to create relations later. Um, but for now, we're just going to create an author column. Okay, we're going to keep it simple. We're going to create an author column. And you guys can agree it's also going to be this varchar255. Because we're in SQL, so string is not a thing. String is not, strings are not a thing, okay. There we go, so ID, title, author. The next thing we've got is genre, and I think you guys can agree as well, that's also gonna be a varchar255, okay. All right, so now we've created our table. Its name is book. It has four columns. It has an ID column, that's an integer, and it has three other columns that are holding arrays of characters and we call those strings just for short right strings because it's like a string of characters right that's that's why we call it that all right so we basically created our table now there's there's a couple of extra things that we need to think about so you guys remember what what is a primary key does anyone remember what does the primary key do what purpose does it serve in a database what does the primary key do Anyone have an idea? Can you just describe simply what does a primary key do? Why do we have them? Why do we create them? What purpose does it serve in this table? Or maybe I can ask uh, maybe a, a clearer question. So this table over here, which column would be the primary key in this table? Which column? ID, exactly. So what is ID allowing me to do? What is ID allowing me to do in this table? Yeah, exactly, it, exactly, exactly. Uh, cool. Um, you, so Yusuf says it identifies each row, basically. So yeah, Chris, Yusuf partnering up to, to answer the question. Good stuff. Um, so yeah, we've got... So yeah, the primary key uniquely identifies each row. Now, all we have to do is we need to tell SQL what the primary key is, okay? So we, and, and to do that, you just type, you just type primary key, primary key. And then in brackets, you give it the name of the column that is the primary key. So that's ID, okay, like that. Why do we put it in brackets? I can probably hear you guys wondering. Well, because remember we do, there is such a thing as a composite key, right? Like if I wanted the primary key to be ID, and title, I could hypothetically do that. We, we're not gonna do that because you guys remember composite keys are bad. If you have an ID that uniquely identifies each row, that's the best thing to use, okay? So we're gonna say primary key ID. And that's, and that's just gonna make sure that ID is unique, okay? Each row is gonna have a unique ID because we told SQL that it must, okay? That's what primary key ID is gonna do. And just to be extra careful, we can tell SQL that the ID, and just next to it, you don't have to do this, but I just want to introduce you guys that you can do this. You can say ID int not null. Okay, like that. ID int not null. Okay. Now, what does not null mean? That means that ID cannot be empty. 
you cannot create a row in this table without giving it an ID. That's what not null means. It can't be empty. You can't leave the ID blank. You have to, if you create a book in this table, you have to give it an ID. That's what not null means, okay? Because null means empty. So not null is like not empty, okay? Um, I'm just gonna run that to make sure that it does work and, and it does, cool. So it's not giving us any errors. Um, that's fantastic. So good start, good start. Okay, so that's our first table. You can notice it doesn't output anything because we haven't given it any data. We haven't asked it any questions yet, um, but that's the first bit. So that's creating our table. Okay, and that's it. That's the whole thing. That's, that's the whole table. Okay, cool. So let's jump into the next bit. So um, I gave some details here. So you'll be able to study from these slides instead of, um, instead of the textbook for this section. Okay, <clears throat> so I gave some extra detail on the, on the right there. Okay. So what we, get, what we do next is we need to insert data into our table. So currently this is just an empty table. It has four columns, but those columns have nothing in them. Um, it has a primary key to uniquely identify each row, but it doesn't have any rows yet, right? It's just an empty table. It's just a structure. So what I wanna do now is insert into the table, okay? We wanna insert into the table. And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna say, now, again, you'll notice that the, the statement just makes sense. It's just how you say it. What do we want to do currently? We want to insert some data into the book table, right? The name of our table is book. So what we're going to do is say insert. Okay, we want to insert something into, okay, where, where are we inserting? We're inserting into the book table. So insert into book. Okay, that's it insert into book, okay. insert into book. And then you need to tell it that you're gonna give it a list of values to insert into the book table. So we're gonna say insert into book values, okay? Insert into book values. So these are the values that I'm gonna insert into the book table. And then in, in the correct order, we're gonna give it a book to insert into the book table, okay? In these brackets over here. I'm gonna put a, a semicolon at the end of the line once again to denote that this is the end of the line. Okay, so what are we gonna do? We're inserting into the book table. Um, so we're gonna insert a book. You guys can make up your own books. I'll put some here, don't worry, I will. After we've inserted our three books, I'm going to, or let's do maybe four or five perhaps, just so that we have some uh, a lot of data to work with. Um, after that, I will copy paste it into the chat so you can copy the copy the schema across to yourselves because I know this will be a lot of typing. So we're going to say insert into book values. Okay, the ID of our first book is going to be one. You maybe we should say zero. Um, you can pick what you like. Okay, I'm just going to make it one just to keep things keep things simple. Okay, so we're going to say one. We need to give our book a title, right? So its ID is one. We're going to give. I mean, its ID is one. We're gonna give it a title. Uh, let's see, the most recent book I read was The Unbearable Lightness of Being. Lightness of Being, okay. The Unbearable Lightness of Being. So, so that's the title of the book. It needs an author, okay. Um, Milan Kundera wrote this book. Okay, Milan Kundera. And it needs a genre. And I would call this book Philosophical philosophical okay like that philosophical okay so we've given it an id a title an author and a genre okay the id the title the author and the genre okay so that's going to go ahead and insert that into the book table let's go ahead and insert another book and you'll see that the statement will be very similar so i'm going to say insert into book Right, we're inserting into the book table, the values, okay? The ID this time, so it's not gonna be one anymore, right? The ID is now two. The title, we can make it, um, uh, Giovanni's Room is the book that I read before this one, I think, Giovanni's Room. That was written by James Baldwin and the genre was, I would call it fiction, I guess, fiction, okay. So there we go. 
we've we've inserted another book. <coughs> okay. Um, and you can see it was the same structure, right? So we gave it the ID, the title of the book, the author of the book, and then the genre. Does anyone have a suggestion for a book that I can add, guys? So I can say insert into book values. I think we can, let's add maybe Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, unless one of you guys give me a suggestion for a book you like, or your own book, perhaps. So we can add, um, make sure it has an author and a genre, though. Um, we, okay, we'll say Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Okay, that's a fun book. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. That was written by Lewis Carroll, I think that's how you spell it, and um, it is, we'll call it fantasy, let's say, let's say fantasy, okay? So that's three books, and again, they all have an ID, a title, an author, and a genre, but I'm pretty sure you guys are getting the hang of this by now, so we can say insert into book, okay, values, four, four. so this ID is going to be four, what should our um, what should our next book be? Suggestions, guys. Does anyone have a suggestion for a book? Do you guys not like reading? We can do movies next time, maybe. Um, let's think. What should we add to our database? Hmm. Hmm. We can do. What else have I read recently? We can do uh, capitalist. This one's getting political though. Uh, Realism by Mark Fisher. And this one would, let's also just say philosophical, even though it's probably not exactly. Okay. And then one more book, because I just want one more book to, to round out the database. Let's say inserts into book, values, five. Uh, we can do maybe just a popular one or something. Ah, Blood Meridian. I actually forgot who wrote this, though. Blood Meridian, Cormac McCarthy. Okay, interesting name. Paul Mac McCarthy. Is that how you spelled it? I don't know. Call Mac McCarthy. Look close enough. And this one will also we will call fiction. Okay, there we go. So I'm gonna copy paste that there. So control C. That's all that's our whole database. I'll just post it in the chat quick. There it is. So that's our whole database with all our data. I, I mean I should have run it first just to make sure that there's no errors, but it looks like there are none. So there we go. We've now got a database and we've inserted four books into our database. So now we want to actually start working with it. Okay. Um, one last thing I do just want to explain to you guys. So there is a command called drop. Okay, drop. So if you say drop table and then the name of the table you want to drop. So like our table is called book. This will delete the table from the database. Okay. It will drop the table from the database. Okay. The word delete does exist. This word here, delete, it does exist, but it means something different. Okay, delete means something else. So when we want to delete a table, we say drop table, okay, drop table, because we drop the table from the database. So just remember that. Obviously, we don't want to drop this table because we want to use it. Um, but yeah, drop does a delete a table from the database or drops a table from the database. The word delete will come up later for something else. Okay. All right, now we can get on to the more interesting stuff. So we've created a table. We now wanna actually work with the data that we're storing here, okay? We wanna work with the data that we're storing here. So there's a couple of different ways to, to work with this data. Um, hmm. Ooh, network issues on my side, trying to reconnect. Ah, oh, that's pity. Don't know if he's back yet. Looks like he's not. Okay. So we want to get all the all the data from our database. Okay. So how do we do that? The the word that they decided to use is select. Okay. Select. You say select the column or columns that you want to select from the database, 
and then you say, I mean, from the table. So this is for a particular table. So we say select the columns that we want to select from, and then the table we want to select from. Okay. Select columns from the table name. Okay. So let's try that. Let's try and select title from book. Okay, let's try that. So I'm going to say select, select. The name of the column we want to select is title. Okay, so select title from book. Like that. Select title from book. Okay, and then I'm putting a semicolon there just to just to make sure everything is fine. Okay. And then I'm going to run this. And there we go. You see what it did. So it said title, the unbearable lightness of being, Giovanni's room, Alice's adventures in Wonderland, capitalist realism, and blood meridian. Those are our titles. Okay. Cool. Not bad, right? If we wanted to select author from book, can someone actually do that for me? Ty type in the full command if you wanted in, in the chat, just to make sure you guys are awake. Type in the full command. What if I wanted to do this, but I want to list all of the authors in the database? What, what command would I write, guys? Ah, it's a pity that Clark disconnected. What command would I write? Select author from book. Yeah, precisely. So let's try that. Uh, both of you got it. Awesome. Select author from book. Okay, like that. Select author from book. Let's run that. And there we go. We've got our list of all the authors, right? So guys, do, do any of you want to take a try? What if I wanted to select title and author? What would I type then? What if I want to get the title and the author? Anyone have any ideas? Just take a guess. Let's see. How, 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 how much does SQL make sense? What do you think we're going to type? What do you predict? Give it a, give it a try. You guys haven't seen it before, so there's no, there's no failing this question, really. Select title and author from book. Perhaps, Yusuf, that, that maybe, maybe. Um, close, at least, close. Okay. Um, select author, comma, title from book. Closer, closer. Um, so, yeah, that, that's, in fact, exactly. Al although, so, yeah, yeah, I guess you could do it that way. So, select author, comma, title. There we go. Um, I think so that'll give us the author and then the title. Um, so you can see it gave us the author and then the title. If we wanted the title to come first, if we wanted the title to come first, we would say title comma author instead. Okay, title comma author. And then it'll just flip around the columns. Okay, title comma author. Okay, um, so the word and does exist, and like that, it does exist. But this is used for something else. This is used for something else. So we'll we'll see it later. Um, but this this you can see it just gives us back zeros. Okay, um, and it's because of like how conditionals work. Zero means false. Okay, um, but yeah, we're we're not. So we we don't have to explore that too much. Um, the the way you do this is with a comma. The word and does exist in SQL, as you could so, see when I typed and when when I type and like that, you can see it's in blue. Right, you can see it's blue. So SQL does know what and means. It just means something a little bit different for, for what, what it means. Okay. But we'll see and later, actually. We'll, we'll work with that a bit later. But yeah, if you want to select multiple columns, you separate them by rows. So, I, mean, I mean by I'm commas. Okay. If you want to select, select multiple com, um, columns, you use commas. Okay. So you can imagine if we want to select every single column in our database, we would say select ID, comma, title, comma author, comma genre, okay? And that's going to give us the whole table, right? You see, it gave us the whole table. We've got the ID, we've got the title, we've got the author, we've got the genre, right? ID, comma, title, comma, author, comma, genre. And you can see if maybe if we just didn't want the author there, so if we just want ID, title, and genre, we could just remove... Um, the author comma, so now it's just idea, comma, title, comma, genre, and now we've just got the idea, the title, and the genre. 
So I'm pretty sure you guys have got the hang of that. It's not, it's not super um, complicated, right? SQL is quite nice um, in that way. Okay, but there is a trick. There is a trick. So you can see that that was quite a lot of typing, right? When we said select ID, comma, title, comma, author, comma, genre, that's quite a lot of typing, right? That's a lot of, that's a lot to type. Um, and so instead of doing that, if you wanna select all of the columns from the table, all of the columns, okay? You don't wanna leave any out. You wanna select every single column. You can just put a star, like an asterisk, okay? A star. So if you push shift and then the eight key on your keyboard, that will give you the asterisk. It's the same as um, the multiply operator in, um, in C sharp, right? Uh, uh, you made it back, Clark. Welcome. Sorry, sorry that you deceived. Um, yes, okay. Okay, um, no problem. Thank you. Yeah. So I copied the whole schema of our database into the chat. Um, I'll, I'll just do it again, actually. Um, so if, if you want to open it up to, to get back where we are. Um, so there's the, the, our whole database is there. Ooh, oh, wait, no, I sent a direct message. To it. Sorry. Uh, there it is. Okay. Um, so that's our whole database. So you can copy that onto the left. And then the statement we have on the right here is select star from book. Okay. So guys, the star just means all. Okay. So typing the star here is the same as me going ID, comma, title, comma, author, comma, genre. Okay. It just means all. So instead of saying select star from book, you would read this select all from book, select all from book. Okay. That's how we would say it if, if we were like reading that. All right. So that's the select statement. That's how we fetch things from the database. Not too difficult so far. Okay. Pretty cool. I, I've just, these are just notes about the statement for like when you're studying, uh, but you guys have, have heard all this now. Okay. We can also update the database. Okay. We can also update the database. So let's try that. Let's update the database. Let's say, hmm. How can I illustrate for this for you guys? So the update statements is also quite simple. So I'm going to leave the select statement there because the update statement you'll see. So I'll, I'll, I'll do it quickly. The update statement, you'll see it just, it just updates. Okay. It doesn't give it back to you. Okay. So it'll update it, but it won't return it. Okay. So you'll see that we won't get any output here, but I'll, I'll run it once without the select statement, and then we'll put the select statement back to see what it does, okay? But how the update statement works is you can say update the, the table you wanna update. So we're gonna say update book, set, and then the, the, na the name of the column that you wanna change you wanna and the change. value that you want to set it to. Okay. So we're gonna say updates, updates, Okay, like that. Update the name of the, the of the table we want to update. Book. So update book. Then we want to set. So what do we want to set? So we're saying update book and set the values to. So set. And then we, we list each of the columns that we want to change. So let's say I want to change title to... Um, let's change it to... It was... Okay. Uh, Okay, cool. We'll change title to Chris and author to Yusuf. Okay, so we're going to say title equals Chris. Okay, Chris. So that will change the title to Chris, and we can say comma author equals Yusuf. Okay, like that. Okay. Cool. Um, does that make sense, guys? Oh, I see Clark just, oh no, Clark, you're still here, cool. I, uh, someone just, Terho disconnected. Ugh, your internet can be so shoddy sometimes. Okay, like that. Okay, so what if I run that? I'm gonna run it, okay. Now you can see that it says there are no results to be displayed, okay? It didn't give us any feedback. So in order to actually see what it changed, we wanna just say select, select star from book, okay, select star from book, just to say select all of the columns from book, okay, and let's run that. Now you can see what did this do? What's weird about this, guys? Why is this weird? You think
think this is what we intended. What did this statement do? That strikes you as a little bit weird. I said, update book, set the title to Chris and the author to Yusuf. And you see what it did. Does that make sense to you? Let's add another one. So I'm going to say, comma, set the genre to clock. Genre equals clock. Like that. Okay. Let's run that. Does anything about this strike you as a little strange, guys? Is this statement useful? Would you actually use this statement? If you had a, if you had a database with 100,000 books, is this useful? Is this what, does this do what we would want it to do? Is this exactly what we expect for an update statement to do? Why is this update statement not useful? What do you guys think? Anyone have any ideas about what I could be suggesting? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Yusuf, it, it updates every single row, right? It updates every single row. Okay. What I'm going to do quickly, I'm, I'm going to remove the update statement, okay? Just to, just to show you guys something. Because if you see, so the update statement, with the update statements, it's particularly weird, right? Because you wouldn't want to set the title of every single book to one specific thing, right? But you can see that the same thing happened with the select statement, right? When I say select title from book, right? If I say select title from book and I run that, select title from book, you can see it gives me every single title, okay? Now, because we have five books, that's fine. But you can imagine if we were on a database with like 100,000 different books, select title from book, that's not that useful, right? It'll give you 100,000 titles, right? So that seems quite weird. So, so what's the problem here? Both of these statements seem kind of silly, right? These don't seem very useful. That's what I'm saying here. You can see that like, you don't want to select everything. You don't want to update everything, right? So you can say, you can choose what column you want to select and you can choose what column you want to update. But how do I choose the row? How do I specify the row? Right? I want to only select certain rows. I only want to update certain rows. And so what we do to, to add this is we use this word where. Where. Okay. So let's, let's try this out. Let's try out the word where. Okay. So I'm going to say uh, select star from book. So select everything from book. But let's say I only want the book whose ID is three. Okay, so I want to select Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. I want to select all of the columns for Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say select star from book. Okay, and you can see that selects the entire table, right? That selects this entire table, select star from book. Okay. What we want to do is we want to say select star from book where, okay, where ID equals three, where ID equals three. Select star from book where, and remember the name of the column is ID, where ID equals three. And you can see when I run this, that's what it gives me. It only gives me Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. You see that? Select star from book where ID equals three. Okay, makes sense. So now we can be more selective, right? Like we can actually select specific rows. Let's say, and, and we can do some pretty cool stuff with this actually. So let's see, we have two philosophical books in our database. You see that? We have two philosophical books. The Unbearable Lightness of Being and uh, capitalist realism. So let's say I want to select let's star from book, star from book but, I but I only want the books where the genre where is the philosophical. Book. Can you tell me guys, what would I write? What am I going to type here in order to get the books where genre is philosophical? What would I type? What would I type? Anyone have any idea?
what would the statement be? I'll give you guys some time to like put it together and think about it. But what would our statement here be? Select star from book. But we only want, we want all of the information, the ID, the title and the author um, and the genre for books that are philosophical. Select star from book where genre equals philosophical. Yeah, precisely, Chris, that's exactly it. In fact, I think I'll just copy paste that. Okay, control C, control V. Okay, there we go. Select star from book where genre is philosophical, where genre equals philosophical. And you can see it now gave us our two books, right? The Unbearable Lightness of Being, because its genre is philosophical, and Capitalist Realism, because its genre is philosophical. You can agree this isn't formatted the greatest, right? We, we, we know that the genre of both of these books are philosophical and we don't want to see the ID. So just to remind you guys, we can select certain columns. Let's say I only wanted the title and the author of all of the philosophical books. So I can say select title comma author from book where genre equals philosophical. Okay, and there we go. Now we get The Unbearable Lightness of Being by Milton Kundera and Capitalist Realism by Mark Fisher. There we go. So we've got our, we selected our philosophical books. Okay, cool. So, so that's really cool. Um, we, we can now select certain rows and the same works with the update statement, right? So I'm gonna push control Z here quickly, control Z, control Z, just to undo all of the changes to get back to here, okay? So the problem was with this statement here, update book set title equals Chris, author equals use of genre equals Clark, was that it updated every single title to Chris, every single author to Yusuf, and every single genre to Clark. Okay, but what we really want to do is select a particular row um, to update. So let's update, um, we'll, up, we'll change book four. Okay, so I'm gonna say where ID equals four, where ID equals four, okay, where ID equals four. So update book, set title to Chris, author to Yusuf, genre to Clark, where ID equals four. Okay, and we run that. And you can see now all of our books are the same, except book four now has the title Chris, the author Yusuf, and the genre as Clark. Okay, so that's that. You see that? Working pretty well. Okay, great stuff. So that's the update statement, that's the select statement, and the where statement is how we, I got there are no results to be displayed. Ooh, uh, for the update statement, Chris, just the update statement, yeah. This one. Remember, you have to select afterwards, hey? So you see I say, I, I put the semicolon there, and then later on I say select star from book, because you have to select as well. You can see if I just say update, if I just say update, you can see when I run it, it says there are no results to be displayed, okay? Because the update statement doesn't return anything. The select statement fetches it from the database. The update just changes it in the database. So after the update statement, we also have to say select star from book, okay? Select star from book. And then it'll return, yeah, yeah. Great stuff. So that's that. that. Um, okay. One more thing. So there's delete. So the word delete, remember I did tell you, so I, we'll discuss this one and then I'll probably take a break because we've got like five more minutes. So delete, before, before we break, we've got five more minutes. So I did tell you that delete means something different to drop, right? Drop, if we say drop table book, that will drop the table book from the database. Yeah, so if we say drop table book, that will drop the book table from the database. But the word delete means something different, okay? Delete is how we delete rows from the table, okay? So we can say delete from table name. Now, if we run this, so if here, yeah, so if I said delete from book, now guys, based on how select and update work, what do you think this will do? If I just ran that, what would that do? What do you think that would do? Based on how update and select work. 
Oh, uh, damn, Yusuf. Uh, well, welcome back. I see everyone made it back. Tef was back, Clark's back, uh, Yusuf, you're back. So yeah, uh, shame. Lots of people are having connectivity problems today. I'm sorry, guys. Um, okay. But that's, it's, that's why it's lucky that we record the lectures though, right? So guys, based on how the select statement works, what do you think this will do? Based on how the select and the update statement work, what do you think this will do? If I just said delete from book, which rows will this delete? It deletes exactly, uh, exactly, Yusuf, exactly, Chris. This deletes everything. This deletes everything from the table, okay? Which is not useful, right? We would never want to delete everything, right? We might just want to delete like one book. Let's say we wanted to delete Giovanni's room from the, from the database. So I'm going to say select star from book on the next line, because just like update, this is the same, just like update, delete is not going to return the results, right? So we have to select as well. So if I say delete from book, you'll see, and then select star from book. If I just run that, you can see it's like there are no results to be displayed. There are no results to be displayed. It deleted everything, right? It deleted everything, which is not useful. What we would really want to do is say delete from book where ID equals, let's say two. We're gonna delete Giovanni's room from the database. So delete from book where ID equals two, okay? And now it's only gonna delete the book with, that, with ID two. So you can see when I run this, um, you can see we've now got the unbearable lightness of being because it's book one, book three, book four and book five, but we don't have book two, okay? Because book two was deleted, All right? So that's that, that's that statement. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So that's the delete statements. And you see, we just use where. So where is how we give it a condition to select certain rows, okay? Where is how we specify that condition? Okay, so that it doesn't apply to every single row because by default, it will select everything, okay? Um, or it will update everything or it will delete everything, okay? So we use the where statement to give it a condition to select certain rows, specific rows. Okay, cool. So that's that, that's for querying tables. But the next thing is, so this where statement, we've seen like where ID equals, where genre equals, okay? Um, and those kinds of things. But that's, that's a fairly simple condition, right? That's a fairly simple set of conditions. Um, so there is like another way, okay? There's another way. Okay, or there are a lot of different ways. These are all of the ways that we can define conditions in SQL. Okay, you can see that there are a lot of them. And so we're gonna discuss them when we come back from the break. Um, we'll discuss all of the different ways to give a condition in SQL. Uh, let's do a 10 minute break. So I'll get started again at around 10.04. I know it's a weird time, but every minute counts guys. So we'll, we'll, I'll get started again at around that time. Um, but yeah, I'll see you in a bit. If you guys have any questions during the break, oh, I, I sent that again. 10, oh, four, there we go. Um, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to post them in the chat during the break. Uh, but you know, go get some water, stretch your legs, and we'll come back and learn more about SQL afterwards. Okay. I think I'm gonna go get some water quick. So I'll be back now.
Ooh, I'm back.
Cool. I think we might even make it through the whole the whole lecture. So that's cool. Oh, okay. Wait. Well, oh, no, I can do it at the end. What's that? Right, shall we get started again, guys? Um, hmm. So I know this table, it looks like a lot, but I think, so the first six, um, so these are in case, in case anyone uh, didn't get it. Uh, so these are the ways in which we can spec specify a condition for the where statement. Okay, so I'll, I'll give you, I mean, we can just go through, just go through a couple of examples. Okay, um, so we're going to create a little select statement here. So select star from book. That selects all the books, right? Select star from book. Okay, if we want to select the book with ID three, right, with ID three, we would say where ID equals three, right, where ID equals three, like that. And then that just gives us Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Okay, fairly straightforward, right? Um, so that's the equals one. That's this first one. You can say, is the thing on the left equal to the thing on the right? That's the condition. The thing on the left must be equal to the thing on the right. That's what equals means, okay, equal to, okay. But there's others, right? And so, I mean, it just makes sense, right? Like if I, I can just ask you, you haven't seen this before, but um, or you have in C sharp, but you haven't seen it in SQL before. But if I ask you, so if I say select star from book where ID is greater than three, like that, where ID um, with that, that arrow there, what books will that give me, guys? What do you expect? What books will that give me? Okay, it'll, you're right. It'll give me, okay, cool. So Yusuf says that'll give us books four and five. Do we agree with that, guys? Will that give us give us books four and five? Everyone agree with Yusuf on that? Chris agrees. Cool. Let's run it. Let's see what happens. Cool. It gives us books four and five. Okay. Makes a lot of sense, right? Where ID is greater than three, those four and five, right? If we say ID less than three, what books will I get now? Uh, is this is this two? Exactly, two one, two one. Okay, that may, maybe was a little bit too easy. Uh, but yeah, there we go. So we go, we get books one and two. There we go. Okay. Could, why? Because those are other IDs that are less than three. Right. There we go. Makes sense. Um, if we say uh, ID less than or equal to four, what books will I get now? ID less than or equal to four. Four, three, two, and one. Exactly. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Okay. There they are. All right. Makes sense. Um, cool. So, so like these first five are all pretty trivial, right? So equals means that the thing on the left must be equal to the thing on the right. Greater than it means what greater than means. Less than means what less than means. Greater than or equal to. Less than or equal to. It all makes sense, right? And these exist in C sharp as well. This next one maybe is like a little bit weird. So it's like, this is saying it's either less than or it's greater than, which is kind of like saying it's not equal to, okay? So let's just think about that a little bit. Let's just think about that. So if I say select star from book where ID, 
less than greater than four. So that's like saying not equal four. What books will this give me, guys? This one's a little bit more difficult, I think, right? What books will this give me? What do you guys think? Those books would be there. So this is saying where ID not equal to four, where ID not equal to four. One, two, three, and five, Clark suggests. Use of degrees, cool. Yeah, exactly. So those, those are, the, that's, that's true. So you see it gives us one, two, three, four, I mean, one, three, one, two, three, and five. Exactly like you guys said, you guys. Yeah, exactly like you guys said. Why? Because those are the IDs that are not equal to four, right? Like you can imagine if I put ID not equal to two, then we would get um, one, three, four, and five, right? Because all of those IDs are not two, right? So we just don't get ID two. Um, cool. You guys remember in, in C sharp, we kind of have this as well. In C sharp, it's, it's this, right? Exclamation points equals. That's like not equal to. So this is the same as that except in SQL, okay? Uh, for those of you who want to connect the two in your, in your head, okay? Um, so that's that, cool. Um, you can also do this with other things, okay? So like if I want um, specifically this one, like, you know, the equal sign can be used for genre as well, right? Like if we want the genre of fantasy, we can say genre equals fantasy like that. Genre equals fantasy. And remember, so if I run that, um, it only gives us books where the genre is fantasy, right? Where genre equals fantasy. Makes sense. Likewise, we can say like where the genre equals fiction, and then it will only give us books where the genre is fiction, genre equals fiction. You can also use this not equal to here. You can say less than greater than, so where genre is not fiction, okay? Where genre is not fiction. And you can see that this gives us the philosophical and fantasy books, right? You see, so now the fiction books have been left out. The fiction books were number two and five. And so they were, they were left out. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. I, and yeah, so you can, you can use those how you want. Those, those first six are fairly intuitive, right? And fairly similar to what we used to um, in C sharp, I think. Now, there, is, there are some pretty weird ones in, in SQL, though. These last four, okay, these are, these are new, okay? The first one is this word between, and Yusuf, here is where we're going to use that word and, okay, the word and, okay? So you can see we can say select star from book, where, and I'm just going to type it, and you guys are going to tell me um, what you think this will do, okay? I'm going to say where ID between two and four, where ID between two and four. Which books do you think this will give me? Two to four, exactly, exactly. So it's inclusive, okay? It's inclusive. It's gonna give us books two to four, okay? So I'm going to run that, and you can see it gives us two, three, and four. Okay. So it is inclusive. It includes each n. So between two and four is two, three, and four. If we say between one and four, that'll obviously be one, two, three, and four. Okay. So it includes each n. Okay. It'll include each n. So remember, the, the middle is also there. Hey? So one, two, three, and four. Yeah. Um, but yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Yeah. So uh, between one and four. Okay. And it includes each end. So we get one, two, three, and four. Okay. Um, cool. So, so that's, um, that just makes sense, right? That's how you would say it's in English, actually, right? Like if you were actually asking for it, this is probably exactly what you would say in English. We want it where the ID is between one and four, right? Um, makes sense. Cool. Uh, a really weird one is like. Uh, I, you know what? We're going to come back to like. Okay. We're going to come back to like. We'll come back to like. Um, so the next one we'll do is in. In is quite easy, actually. In makes a lot of sense. So if we say, if you want to give like a list of genres. So we want all of the books that are either fiction or fantasy. Okay, let's say that. We want all the books that are either fiction or fantasy. You might want to say something, and you, and you could say this. We could say select star from book where genre equals 
oh, oh, sorry, I need to put the word where, okay, where genre equals fiction. And then this word or, you could say where genre equals fiction or genre equals um, fantasy. Okay, so you can see that gives us all the fiction and fantasy books. That does work, where genre equals fiction or genre equals fantasy. You can imagine that this would get pretty tedious though, right? Like if we wanted all the fiction, fantasy and philosophical books, we would have to, so that happens to be all the books, but imagine we were working with a larger database that had a lot of other genres. You could imagine that this list could get quite long. We could say like, or genre equals something or genre equals something else or genre equals something else. And we would go on and on and on and on and on and it would get like quite complicated. And so instead of doing that, you can just give it a list. A very easy list. You can say where genre is in, where genre in, and then just give it a list, however long you want, like fiction, fantasy, like that. Where fiction, fantasy. So what is this saying? This is saying where the genre is in this list of things, okay? So where the genre is in fiction and fantasy, okay? And you can see that gives us the fiction and fantasy books, but you could do this with the ID as well. You could say, we want the books who have the IDs either one, three, or five, okay? So where ID, so we would say where ID in one, three, five, where ID in one, three, five. And you can see now it'll give us one, three, and five. You see that, one, three, and five. And so you can just give it a list of things, okay? That it must be. So where ID in this list, all right? I hope that makes sense. Uh, it's not too bad, I don't think. Okay, so that's in, you can just give it a list and it'll just go through all of the things, okay? And just make sure that it's in the list, okay? The word not, so we'll get back to like, but the word not, okay? The word not is fairly okay as well. The word not is just, it just negates whatever the condition was. So um, there's, there's lots of ways you can get quite creative because there's lots of ways to do the same thing, right? Like. If you wanted to say where ID not equal to three, you could do it like that. You guys have seen this before, right? We, we saw this just like a couple of, couple of minutes ago, right? Where ID not equal to three. But you could also say where ID equals three and then just put not at the beginning. Okay. So like where not ID equals three. And you can see that gives us one, two, four, and five. Okay. So the word not just negates any condition. So if we had like, for example, uh, where ID equals, um, or let's do, hmm. if we said where ID between, okay, this one, it, it'll, it'll look weird, but let's, let's try it. So if we said where ID between two and four, okay, where ID between two and four, you guys know this will give me two, three, and four, right? What if I said where ID, where not, ID between two and four. What do you think that will do? One and five, exactly, Yusuf, exactly. Um, so you see that gave us one and five. Because the range was two to four, and we said not that range. So we got everything outside that range. Okay, one and five. All right, so you can get really, you can get pretty creative. You can, you can do basically whatever you want to do with those things. Okay. Now, the last one that we want to see, the last way we can define this is, is with the word like. Okay, the word like is very weird. It's, it allows you to define a pattern. It's not difficult. It's just, it's strange. It's very specific. So I'm going to say select star from book. Okay, quickly. Cool. So let's, let's look at these. Now, the word like is for when you have a very specific thing that you are looking for. Like, let's, for example, say, we were looking for everyone who had the letter, um, hmm. this is weird. Uh, it, it, it does get a bit strange. So everyone does, let's see, is there, is there a unique letter here that, that like two people have, but other people don't have or something? Uh, okay, let's, let's start simple. Let's say we were looking for everyone who's B, B. So we've got Baldwin, um, Baldwin has a B in it. Kundera doesn't though. Carol doesn't. Fisher doesn't. McCarthy doesn't. Um, I think C could work. B 
because because Lewis Carroll, uh, oh, N, let's see N. So Milan, Kundera, Baldwin. Okay, that could work. Cormac. Okay, so that's two people. Uh, I think either let's say C or or yeah, N. Okay, let's use C or N. Okay, we'll we'll try with both. Let's let's do a few different ones. Okay, we can do it a few different ones. The like can be quite fun. So let's say we were looking for authors. We'll start simple. Let's say we were looking for authors whose first name started with a C. Okay, whose first name started with a C. So how would we do that? We would say, okay, select star from book where, so we're looking for author, right? We're looking for author. So what we need to do here is be able to define a pattern. We need to be able to define a pattern, okay? Like the, the first letter must be B. So how we would do that is we would say where author like, where author like, and then you'll give it some pattern. So we want everyone whose first name starts with a, a C. So this will just be Cormac, okay? Just Cormac McCarthy. So we would say C and then like a percentage and then a percentage sign. So what does this mean? What that means is it's like the, the first letter in author must be a C. <clears throat> so there, that's why we have the C there. And then the percentage sign just means anything, okay? Anything of any length, all right? Anything of any length, okay? That's what the percentage sign means. So when I run this, okay, you see we get Cormac McCarthy. Why? Because we've got a C and then we've got this Ormac McCarthy, okay? You agree, Ormac McCarthy is anything of any length, right? It's like, it's, it's that whole thing is the percentage sign. The percentage sign is holding Ormac McCarthy and we've got the C. Okay. So that's the only thing we could construct with that pattern. Does that make sense? So for example, if you wanted to say, we want you to have a C anywhere in your name, a C anywhere in your name. It doesn't have to be the beginning. It doesn't have to be the end. It can be the middle if you want. It can be the beginning. It can be the end. Oh, and by the way, percentage can mean nothing. Okay, it can also mean nothing. Okay. So anything of any length that includes nothing. Okay, so we can say C percentage sign, percentage sign. I mean, so C or sorry. Okay, let me just say it. So we're author like percentage sign C percentage sign. So let's let's see what happens. So I'll run that. You can see we now get Lewis Carroll and we get Cormac McCarthy. So why did we get both of these? So why did we get Lewis Carroll? Because Lewis and space, so Lewis space, that's the first percentage sign, okay? We've then got a C and we've, so we've then got that C and then we've got a Arrow. okay? So you see that fits the pattern, percentage sign, so anything of any length, letter C, and then anything of any length, okay? And Cormac McCarthy obviously fits that pattern. It has, it. Cormac McCarthy has three C's, so it can fit that pattern very easily, okay. Um, oh, and by the way, the case doesn't matter in here. Yeah, the case doesn't matter. So lowercase c will also satisfy it, okay. Uh, in fact, I can show you that if I just say c like that. Let's run that, see what happens. You can see Lewis Carroll is still there. Even though the, the c in Carroll is a capital C, the c we have here is a lowercase c. You can see that doesn't matter. What matters is the pattern. Okay, so maybe a little bit weird, but let's let's continue. So the, the, we, we can do even more complex patterns than this. Okay, we can do even more complex patterns than this. So I'm gonna back, go back to selecting everything quickly just to, um, let's, let's discuss another one. Let's say we want everyone who the second letter of their name is A, okay? The second letter of their first name is A. So we've got James Baldwin and Mark Fisher. Okay, those are the two that we want to get out of this. Okay, the second letter of their first name is A. Okay, how would we do that? So how we would do that is we would say where author, where author like, where author like, and here's another character. So these are the two characters I wanted you to remember. I wanted you to, I want you to remember the percentage sign and the underscore. Okay, the percentage sign and the underscore. OK, 
Okay, so the percentage sign means anything of any length. The underscore means any singular character. Only one character can hold that place. So you can see if we said underscore a percentage sign. What's that saying? What pattern does that define? We've got underscore a percentage sign. So let's see. Let's run that. Okay. Underscore a percentage sign. So what did we have here? We got James Baldwin and Mark Fisher. So for James Baldwin, the J is taking the place of the underscore. Okay. So J, that's the underscore. We've then got the letter A. Okay. So the pattern still matches. The pattern still matches. We've then got the letter A. And then we've got um, Mez Baldwin. Okay. Like that. Okay. And that's the percentage sign. Anything of any length. We've then, like with Mark Fisher, we've got the same, right? The M is taking the place of the character. We've then got an A. And we've then got Rick Fisher or RK Fisher, okay? That's taking the place of the percentage sign, anything of any length, okay? So let's, okay, uh, so I'll give you guys, um, let's, let's do another. So... <laughs> Uh, this this one I'll ask you guys to do. So you're going to use those two characters, and let's see if if someone can create a thing. So hmm, which which should we use? Because it might be a little bit it's a bit strange. Hmm. So we've got an James Mark. Ah, okay. Let's do. Uh, the third letter of their name must be an R. Okay. That's all I want. That's the condition. That's the pattern I want. How would I do that, guys? What, what condition would I use? What pattern would I use? You don't have to define the whole where statement. Just, just define the, the pattern, this pattern here. How would you describe that pattern? The third letter must be an R, and, and the rest we don't care about. The third letter must be an R, though. How would you do that? Anyone have any ideas? <laughs> I'll, I'll give you guys some time to think about it. So remember, underscore can take the place of a single character. Ooh. Oh, welcome, Taffy. Glad you could make it. Oh, right, okay, cool. So we've got a we've got a suggestion here from Chris. Where select star from book where author like? Okay, I take it that's two underscores. Hey, Chris. Yeah. Okay, it's two underscores. I see. And then we've got R percentage sign. Exactly, that's that's exactly correct. Um, so oh. so the case doesn't matter. So yeah, um, capital R, lowercase R doesn't matter. So we can say underscore underscore R percentage sign. So let's see if that works. If this works, we would get Mark Fisher and Cormac McCarthy, right? Because the third letter of both of those names are is R, right? Is R. So let's see. Bam, we get Mark Fisher and Cormac McCarthy. So why did this work? So for Mark Fisher. The M and the A are taking up the first two slots defined by the two underscores. We've then got the letter R. Okay, that's taking the place of the R there in the pattern. And then we've got K Fisher. Okay, so that's Mark Fisher. Mark Fisher fits the pattern because K Fisher is the percentage sign, anything of any length. With Cormac McCarthy, we've got a similar thing, right? The C and the O are taking the place of the first two underscores. We've then got an R and then we've got anything of any length. So that gives us Cormac McCarthy. Okay, great stuff. Um, yeah, so, so that's pattern matching. It can get a little bit confusing. Maybe you'll have some practice with it in like a little extra assessment now. Um, but if you know the underscore and you know the percentage and you can combine those in interesting ways, uh, then you'll be, you'll be fine. And remember, so uh, I'll, you know what? I'll do one more example. Um, let's say, so, because you can get super con confusing, right? So let's, Let's do another. I'll, um, I'll select the whole thing and I'll do like one more pretty weird one. Let's say we want the, <laughs> we can go crazy with this actually. Um, let's say we want uh, the second last letter of their name to be, the second last letter of their name to be I. Okay, so it'll only be James Baldwin. So for that, it's not that difficult, I suppose. You would just say where percentage sign, so that's anything of any length. We would then want the letter I and just one more character. Okay, So that's saying the second last letter of their name must be an I. And if I run that, um, you can see we just get James Baldwin because we've got anything of any length 
Um, that's the James bold W. We've then got the letter I, and then we've got a single character. Okay. So that's fine. Um, that's that. Cool. So we've got all of the, um, all of that done. Okay, that's like, um, and yeah, so those are all the ways we can define conditions for where. Now we've just got two more things to cover in this lesson, and I don't think they're too bad, actually. They're not too bad. So the first thing you guys remember um, from, from like last week's lecture, there was a lot of like splitting, right? We, we didn't keep arrays like this, right? For example, if you remember in, in this book case, in, in this case here, this, this table here, what we what we ended up doing is splitting book and author into two tables, right? Later on as well, um, over in 3NF, uh, let me just jump over there, we had this book table, okay? And what we ended up doing is we split it, in, we split it into a book and a genre table. So how do you do that? How do we create two tables that are linked, right? You can see we've got a genre ID here, one, two, two. We've got a genre over here, and so like, um, if we wanted the genre of metamorphosis, we would say, okay, the genre ID is two. We jump over to the genre table and we see that genre two is fiction. Okay. So how do we actually do that in SQL? How do we define these relations? Hmm. So it's it's a different, it's it's different, Yusuf. I, I could picture you you would definitely do like to filter the relationships. You could. Um, but yeah, there's it's it's different. Uh, but it's not it's not too bad. This bit's not too bad. So let's let's do it. Let's actually go ahead and we're gonna split our table over here. So I'm, I'm gonna select the whole thing. I'm gonna select the whole thing. What we're gonna do, we're gonna split the table we have here into two tables, okay? A genre table and a book table, okay? So we're just gonna push these genres into another table. Okay. So in order to do that, we have to create a genre table and that table is gonna be super simple. So I'm gonna, go to the top here and I'm going to say create table genre. Okay, that's going to create the genre table. Okay, create table genre. Okay, create table genre. Um, now the genre table is very simple. It's going to have two columns, right? We're going to design it exactly like this. It's going to have a genre ID and like the name of the genre. We'll call this the name of the genre. So genre ID and name, essentially. So it's going to have an ID and a name. So we're going to say ID is an int. It's not null. So this is exactly the same as our ID for the book table, right? So what does this mean? It's an ID, it's an integer, and it's not empty. Okay, that's all that means. That's our first column. We then want another column for the name. Okay, name, varchar255, and that's it. Cool. So there we go. We, we have our genre table. It's got an ID and a name. What else do we want? We want to specify the primary key, right? So what am I going to make the primary key of the genre table, guys? What am I going to make the primary key of the genre table? Anyone? ID, exactly, makes sense, right? So we would say primary key ID. I think you guys can, I mean, so, oh, sorry, primary key ID, exactly like we do in, in the book table. Okay, there we go. Um, but do you guys know that this, the, these are separate tables, right? So the ID over here is not the same as the ID over here. These are two separate columns. They're in different tables, okay? Uh, just in case that wasn't clear for anyone, they do have the same name, but they're in different tables, okay? So, so they're separate columns because um, they're in totally different tables, okay. Um, cool, so that creates the genre table, that's done. That creates the genre table. But what we need to do now is we need to link the book table to the genre table, okay. We need to link the tables together. Um, and all we have to do to do that is, is add like one line. So now instead of storing the genre in book, okay, instead of storing the genre in book, we're gonna store the genre ID, okay? And that's gonna be an integer, okay? Um, so it's gonna, it'll look exactly like this, okay? 
Here, we are storing the genre name in the genre table, okay, there. And instead of storing the genre in the book table, we just store an ID pointing to the genre table. So that's what this genre ID here is going to do. It's an integer. And now we just add this one line. And this, this is the powerful line. This is the, this is the main one. This will link the two tables. Okay. And yeah, it's just one line, basically. So we say, we tell it. We call it a foreign key. Okay, so we say foreign key. Why do we call it a foreign key? What does that mean? So we call it a foreign key. We're going to call genre ID a foreign key. Why? Because it is the primary key of another table. Okay. So it's like, it's a key. It's in our table. It's a key, but it's, it's the key of another table. So it's foreign, right? It's from another table. Like it's, it's how we use the word foreign, right? From another place, from another country, whatever. Um, foreign, okay. Um, or in another country, whatever. So foreign key. That's um, like, it's from another table. It's foreign to our book table, okay? So we say foreign key, genre ID, okay? Genre ID, okay? Because it's the key of another table, okay? So foreign key, genre ID, that's the name of the table. We then need to tell it which other table, you know, like what column in what table is this the key for? Like, show me, where, where is this from? Where is this foreign key from? And to do that, we just say it references, references. So foreign key genre ID references the genre table, okay? And the ID column, okay? So what is that saying? I'll, I'll break it down for you again. So what we've got, we have foreign key genre ID. So this first bit here, this first bit here is saying that the genre ID column over here is a foreign key. It's not from the book table. It's not from the book table. It's from another table, okay? This genre ID is the primary key of another table, okay? It's a key for another table. And so what, so what, what we need to tell it then, okay, so now it knows. After reading that, it knows, okay, genre ID is from another table, but we need to tell it where, okay? What other table? Which other table? Which column in that other table? And so we can say, okay, genre ID references, okay, it references, okay, what does it reference? It references the genre table and the ID column. So it references the ID column in the genre table. Okay, does that make sense, guys? I hope it does. Um, and yeah, it's, it's not too bad, like once you, once you figure out what it's saying. And again, it's almost how you would say it in English, right? It's almost how you would say it in English. Okay, but I think you can agree. So this is getting a little bit more complicated than the stuff we've seen up till now. So SQL, it's, it's really nice and friendly. Um, the, the relations are where it can get fairly, um, a little bit more hectic, but this, this is still okay, I think. Okay, cool. So we've created those two tables now. And so now we just need our data to reflect that, okay? We need our data to reflect that. So we have three genres. So quickly, I'm just going to insert those three genres into the genre table. And we're going to use our old friend, the insert statement. So we're going to say insert into, ooh, insert into genre values. Okay. And we're going to create our three genres. Okay. So we have philosophical, philosophical, philosophical. Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to copy paste the line and just change the ID and the name just to be a little bit faster for you guys. So insert into values two, insert into values three. So genre two is going to be fiction and genre three is going to be fantasy. Okay, fantasy. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So we've now inserted the philosophical fiction and fantasy genre into our genre table. And the next thing we have to do is inside our book table, like instead of writing philosophical here, right? We now give it the ID of the genre. So what ID is this going to have, guys? Just to make sure that you guys are awake. What ID would I give this book here? Genre ID. What genre ID am I going to give this book here? The Unbearable Lightness of Being by Milan Kundera. It's philosophical genre. So what genre ID is that? Anyone have an idea? 
What genre idea is that? So look carefully. Remember, so this is referencing the ID of the genre table. So here's the genre table and its IDs. So you see, we've got our three genres there. Here's the name of our genre, but we no longer specify the name of the genre in the book table. We specify the ID of the genre. So what ID is that gonna have? Philosophical will be replaced by genre ID what? One, exactly. So we put a one there. Okay, let's check out the next one. Let's go through all of them together just to make sure that um, we're all on the same page. So this fiction genre over here, fiction genre. What, what genre ID will that be, guys? What genre ID will that be? Two, exactly. Uh, Yusuf and Clark, you got it. So two, um, cool, we've got a fantasy. What genre ID will that be? Fantasy, three, exactly, exactly. So that's three. Okay, so, so far it's been exact, right? Um, it's almost like the ID and the genre ID so far have always been the same, but let's see if that holds up. So now we've got the ID of the, so what is the genre ID of book four? You can see it's a philosophical over here. What is its genre ID? What is its genre ID? So we need to reference the philosophical genre in the genre table. How do we do that? Anyone? Ah, oh, Chico, you made it as well. Uh, good to see you. Do remember, uh, Taffy and Chico, remember to catch up with uh, anything you missed, eh? But yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. So now maybe we're at a bit of a log ahead. So remember, the genre ID doesn't have to be unique in the book table, guys. You can use the same genre ID multiple times. It's a foreign key. It's a primary key for the other table. It doesn't have to uniquely identify every single row in the book table. So guys, what is the philosophical ID? We've used it before already. What is the ID for the philosophical genre? What is the ID for the philosophical genre? One, exactly. So that book is going to have the ID of one. And let's see again. So we've now onto the last book. Its genre is fiction. So what ID are we referencing? What ID are we referencing in the genre table to get the fiction genre? What is the two exactly? Okay, so at least I, I know Yusuf has got the idea now. Uh, Clark, it also seems like, but, but let's see. Let, so let's see what happened, what's going on here. So, so now when I say select star from book, it's gonna look very similar. So I'm gonna say select star from book. Um, and you can see it gave me basically the same thing. So we've got our five books. Their five titles are the same. The five authors are the same. But you can see now in the genre column, we've now got genre ID. And it says one, two, three, one, two. One, two, three, one, two. Okay. So what I'm going to do as well, I'm going to say on the next line. So instead, I'll say select star from book. And I'm going to say select star from genre. Select star from genre. Select star from genre. Okay, select star from book, select star from genre. And I'll run that. Okay. So now we've got two tables here. So you see, I've got our normal table. It's got one, two, three, one, two. That's our normal book table. Down here, we've got our philosophical table. One, two, three, philosophical, fiction, fantasy. Okay. So do you guys see how, this, how these tables are related? Do you guys see how these tables are related? So if I say Giovanni's Rune, what genre ID does it have, guys? So tell me the genre ID of Giovanni's Rune. The genre ID of Giovanni's Rune. So all you have to do is read the column, the genre ID, right? I get this error five times schema. Schema text. Dot. Uh, I tell you what, Chris, I'll send you in, I'll send you my version of the database. Uh, I think maybe you either changed the name of the book table, or maybe you replaced the book table with the genre table. Um, I'm not sure which, but uh, perhaps it was one of those. So you do see, I've still got my definition of the whole book table here. 
Um, and it hasn't changed at all. The, the definition of the book table over here hasn't changed at all. It, we just added this one line for the foreign key. Okay. But I don't know. Uh, so, so try copy that. Ooh, but also make sure um, your genre table over here must be defined before the book table. Okay. And you must insert your genres before you insert your books referencing your genres. Okay. Because like, obviously, if the genres don't exist, the books can't reference them. If there is no genre table, you can't reference it. But anyway, if you copy, if you copy my schema over there, um, hopefully that'll, that'll work for you. Okay. But do let me know. Okay. Um, cool. So the, the genre, guys, the genre ID of Giovanni's room. So this book here, what is its genre ID? Someone tell me. Quick, quick. What is the genre ID of Giovanni's room? Two, exactly. Just to make sure you've got the idea, because you guys actually could have given me the ID or the genre ID. What is the genre ID of capitalist realism? One, exactly. So let's work with that one. The genre ID of capitalist realism is indeed one, okay? Because it's this fourth column over here. So we've got the genre ID. Now, if we want the genre, we would jump over to our genre table and someone tell me, since the genre ID of capitalist realism is one, what is its genre? What is its genre? The name. What is its genre's name? I should ask. What is its genre's name? Philosophical. Exactly. Okay. I think you guys all get the idea, right? So that's how you read that. You can see that the genre ID relates each book to a genre, right? Um, cool. So that makes sense. But now you can see that this has become slightly more difficult to read. Like, what if I want to join the tables? How do I like join the table? So they reference each other. They clearly reference each other, but I don't manually want to have to go, um, you know, get the genre ID of this book with the select statement and then select that genre in the other book. That's really annoying. Okay. We want to automatically join them. Okay. We want to join the tables together. So how do we do that? Um, it's actually fairly simple to do that inside SQL. Um, although I must say the first time I was taught this statement back in high school, um, I think I was in like uh, maybe grade 11 or 12 at the time. I don't know. I forget. Um, but this statement freaked me out. Okay. I, this was, this I found really difficult. I don't think it's that hard. Maybe I just wasn't taught it properly or maybe I was just very dumb in high school. I don't know. Um, but hopefully, hopefully I explain it to you guys better. Hopefully you get it. Okay. So um, let's see. So it's called a join statement, an inner join. So that's how we join these two tables together. Um, and hopefully, hopefully you guys will be able to see what it's doing. So we've got this book table, okay? We've got the book table. What we want to do is we want to join the book table to the genre table, okay? We've got these two tables, book and genre, and we want to join them together to make like one big table. So we use the join statements. We say select star from book in a join genre, okay? That's what we say, in a join genre. So if it stopped there, that would be great. Okay, If it stopped there, that would be great. That makes a lot of sense, right? We're taking the book table and we're joining it to the genre table. And we know, like as humans, we know that the genre ID should be joined to the ID, right? Of the genre table. That makes sense. That's, that's what we want to happen. However, the computer doesn't know that, okay? The computer doesn't know what column you want to join on. Like what column from the book table must join to what column on the genre table? We have to tell it that, okay? And so what we say is we say, select star from book in a join genre. So we're joining the book table to the genre table. And we need to tell it what column we wanna join on, what columns we wanna join on. So we say book in a join genre on, okay? These are the columns we wanna join on. We say, book dot genre ID. Okay, so we want to use from the book table, from the book table, we want to use the column called genre ID. Okay, and that column must be equal to the genre dot ID column. Okay. So in the genre table, the ID column. Okay, so this process we went through here, this exact process, 
where I asked you guys, capitalist realism, what is its genre ID? It's one, okay? And then I asked you, okay, so what is its genre? And you guys were like, okay, the genre ID was one, that means it's philosophical. So you said that the genre ID column in the book table, one, had to equal the ID column of the genre table, one, okay? So that's all this is saying. Inside the genre ID of the column of the book, I mean, the genre ID column of the book table, that must equal the ID column of the genre table. So it's doing that same process. That's what we're asking the computer to do for us. So let me run that. I'm gonna run that statement. Select star from book, join book to genre, where or on, so like the what, what, what columns are we joining on? So on book.genre ID equals genre.id, okay? And I run that. And you can see what it gives me here, this whole big table, okay? It gives me a massive table here. And you can see we've got ID, title, author, genre ID. We've got another ID, but these are the IDs of the genre table and then all of these genres. And you see how the genres repeat, guys. So you see it says now capitalist realism. The genre ID was one. The ID in the genre table is one and it's philosophical. Okay. So I hope you guys understand that. It's not too bad, I don't think, um, but it is a little bit... It's, it's a little bit hectic, maybe. I, I don't know. I, I, hopefully it makes sense. If it doesn't, uh, do ask. Okay. Okay, but now we can work with this whole table, this whole massive table here. We can work with it just like it's one table. Okay. Like I can now just say, okay, where, um, we can use all our previous where statements, for example. I can say like where ID, so we need to tell it which ID we're talking about now. So where book.id, so where the ID column of the book table, uh, between, um, let's say, two and three. Okay, where, between two and three. And I can run that. And you can see, ooh, two and four. Okay, two and between two and three is a bit silly because there's nothing between two and three. It's just two and three. Uh, so let's say between two and four. And you can see it gives me four, two, and three. Okay, there we go. So you see that, guys. It gives me the correct books. Okay. Cool. Um, so hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Um, and we can treat this all now as like one big table. Okay. As one big table. And hmm. so you can do all the normal stuff. Like what if we wanted all the fiction genre? We could say genre.name, where genre.name equals fiction. And you can see it gave me uh, Giovanni's Room and Blood Meridian because their genre name is fiction. Okay, cool. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. It's pretty, it's not too bad, right? So it just joined those two tables into one big table. You might ask now, well, what is the point now? Why did we split these into two different tables? Um, and the answer to that is remember all of those anomalies we were talking about, those database anomalies, why we have to normalize a database in last week's lecture. That's why, okay, it, it does, it actually makes sense to do it this way because um, the data fiction, you don't have to repeat it multiple times in the database, okay, you just, you just need to say fiction once, and then you just reference it with an integer, which is much smaller, much easier to store, much easier to work with, okay, because you can use between and all of that kind of stuff, okay, but anyway, we, we don't have to uh, think too much about that, hopefully you remember from last week's lecture, why normalization occurs, and we went through those examples, um, but yeah, cool. There's not just one thing I, I need to tell you guys about, one more thing, and then we're done for today, and that's a procedure, okay? It's called a procedure. So let me, let me give you this example quickly. So we've got this statement here, okay? All this does currently is we've got this fairly complex database now, right? It's got two tables at least, um, and so we've got this fairly complex database, and we, we select the genre fiction. So let's say we're, we're the database administrator at a big publisher, and they come and they ask us, select all the, um, please get us the, the titles of all of the, um, the titles and authors of all of the books that have the genre fiction. And so we are a database administrator. So we go in, we say, okay, cool. Select title, comma, author, 
from book in a joint genre on book.genre ID equals genre ID, where genre.name equals fiction. And we run that, okay? Um, and bam, we've got the title and author of all of the fiction books in our database. And you can imagine there could be way more of these. We could have thousands of fiction books in our database. Here we've got two, but you can imagine, okay? Cool, so that got that. Let's say the following day they come and ask us, okay, please get the title and the author of all of the fantasy books. Okay. And we go, okay, we're the database administrator. So we go ahead and we do it. We say, cool, we want the title and the author of all of the books. Okay, so from book where the genre name is fantasy. Okay, so we say, cool, inner join genre on book dot genre ID equals genre dot ID where genre dot name equals fantasy, okay. So quite a lot of typing, you know, it's a difficult job, but we, we've got the query now, cool, great stuff. Okay, the following day they come and ask us for the title and author of all of the philosophical books. And we go ahead, we go, okay, cool, select title. And you can imagine I type all of that out. Now, what is the only thing that changed? You can imagine I would have to type all of this, right? All of this. And the only thing that would change is this, right? This would just be philosophical, philosophical, right? That's a long statement, right? That is a lot of typing, right? Just to change this one thing. You guys can picture that, right? It's, it's quite a lot to type. So let me ask you this. If we were in C sharp and we had this bit of code that was really, really similar, and we were using it really often. Okay, we were using it really often. Where would we put that code? What would we create for that code? Like, let me give you an example. Let's say there's something we're doing really often. Like we, we're working with a lot of rectangles. We have a geometry library. And we're working with lots of rectangles. We're calculating the area over and over and over and over again. Would you every single time for every rectangle, say like rect1, dot length times rect one dot width, rec two dot length times rec two dot width, uh, rec three dot length times rec three dot width. Would you do it that way? Or where would you put the thing that multiplies the, the length and the width? Where would we put that guys? What, what, what structure, what pr programmatic structure in C sharp would we use to hold that information, that behavior? of calculating the area. Or you can imagine, let's say we had a whole lot of enemies that were that had to be able to attack things. Would you individually code up the attack statement for every single enemy? Or where would you put that attack statement? What programmatic structure would we use to hold the behavior of attacking in C sharp? Anyone have an idea? Guys might've forgotten the name. In interface, so it's inside an interface clock. It is inside an interface or inside a class, but this is holding behavior. So more specific than that. This is holding behavior. Because remember, the interfaces and the classes, they can also hold attributes and properties, but you wouldn't put behavior in those attributes and properties. Like length and width are the attributes, but where do I say length times width? Where do I calculate that area? What structure do we use exactly? We would hold it in a method. Okay, and this is kind of similar, right? This code here, it's a lot of code, it's running very often, and it changes only subtly, right? So we wouldn't type this out every single time. We would want to hold it in like a method, right? We would want to hold it in like a method. Um, I hope you guys don't mind. We're going to go a little bit over time, maybe a little bit, but um, yeah, this is the last little bit. So we have this idea of a method inside um, SQL as well. And they're called procedures, okay? So in JavaScript, I don't know if you guys remember, we had a function and functions were similar to methods in C-sharp. And in SQL, we have procedures and they're similar to methods inside C-sharp, okay? So every language calls it a different thing, but basically a procedure is just a method, okay? Um, it holds a bit of code that you'll, use, that you'll use regularly, okay? And so this is how you define a procedure inside SQL on the right here. On the left is what they have in your book on page 160 in the PDF I sent on the group for chapter six. Um, and yeah, so that's how you might've done it like a hundred years ago. Uh, the book is very old, um, but here's how you would do it in like a modern version of SQL, this thing on the right here. But I think let's just do it. I'm just gonna program it up. 
um, what we're going to do is we're going to throw this first one here into a procedure, this first statement here. Okay. So we go into our schema. Okay. We go into our schema and we say create procedure. So earlier we were creating tables, but now we're creating a procedure, create procedure. We have to give our procedure a name. I'm going to call mine get books, get books, okay? Like that, create procedure, get books. And you put some brackets there, okay? So show that's a procedure, it's callable. Okay, that's how we say, you call the procedure, just like you call the method, you call the function, okay? Um, okay, we need to give our procedure a beginning and an end. So we say begin, begin. This is the beginning of our procedure, the beginning of the code, and there's the end of the procedure, okay? And all we have to do then is we copy this here. We're gonna control X to cut it. Okay, you could also like right click, cut, okay, cut. And you're just gonna throw the code into the procedure right there. There we go. That's the code that we're running. Okay, so that's our procedure. Not too bad. It's called get books. It's got that code in it, that query that we were running. However, there's one problem here, guys. There's one problem. Look at how we've been ending. I'll, I'll give you guys a hint, but ultimately I want you guys to tell me what the problem is. Um, look at how we've been ending every single line here. So we ended the creates with the semicolon. We ended the inserts. Um, all of the inserts have that semicolon at the end. When you look at this, what do you see? What's a problem? We say create procedure. Let's go through it. We say create procedure. That's all fine. Get books, cool, that's fine with the brackets, cool. Begin, okay, we have our bit of code here, select title, author, from book, enter, join, genre, on book, that whole long query that we have. We then have a semicolon and we have end. Do you guys see a problem here? What? How will SQL interpret this? When it reads this line over here, it goes, okay, I'm, I'm beginning, cool, begin, select title, author, from book, okay, it goes through the whole query goes through the whole query, it sees the semicolon. What does it do when it sees that semicolon, guys? What does it see? What does it think? Anyone have any idea? What's a potential problem that you guys can see happening there? Given how a computer thinks. Remember, computers are very stupid, guys. <laughs> They're very silly. Okay, so I'll, I'll tell you, uh, since maybe, I, I mean, maybe it's a lot to type, it's a little bit abstract, I guess. So what the computer will do is when it gets to this X, the semicolon, it'll just stop reading. It'll be like, okay, cool, it's done. But then you can see that our procedure wouldn't have an end, right? And so what we have to do, what the semicolon is called is a delimiter, okay, a delimiter. Um, it's called this, delimiter, that's how you say it, delimiter. So why is it called the delimiter? So the word, the this prefix D, that means to like separate or segregate. So like D um, is is to is that's what the prefix means. So you can see it in words like defense, right? So D, that's like separate, fence. So this is like separate with the fence. That's what defense means, right? Defense, it makes sense. It's a good word. Delimiter is the same. Okay, so D, it means separate. So the why is it D? So it separates each line. Limiter, it also limits the end of the line, right? It puts a limit on where the end of your line is. So delimiter, it's the thing that separates and limits the length of your lines, okay? So semicolon, that's what it is currently. That's the delimiter. What we have to do is we have to change the delimiter, okay? So if we say delimiter um, slash slash, what that is saying is it's going, okay, the new delimiter for the rest of this code, for everything after this line, the delimiter is no longer semicolon. It's now slash slash. And so now what will happen is it'll go create procedure, get books, begin, select title author from book. It'll go through that whole query. But when it sees the semicolon, it won't stop reading. It'll go to the end and then we'll put a slash slash there at the end. And that'll be the new end. Okay. So it's a little bit weird, but hopefully you guys can see it. And then you can say, instead of typing out this whole query each time, you can just say call get books, call, get books, and then run it. Okay. 
and it now runs that whole query. That query that we saved inside our procedure is what it executes. Okay. Now there's one little thing here as well. You guys see that here it's fiction. Now I could say, okay, if I wanted fantasy, I could just change this to fantasy, right? Open up the schema, update the schema, um, change that to fantasy, and now it'll search for fantasy. If I wanted to search for philosophical, I could just update that to philosophical, philosophical. Okay, but there's there's actually a better way to do that. Okay, there's a better way to do that um, where you can just change it here. Okay, because you don't want to have to update your database schema just to change that one thing in the procedure. Um, and so what we add is a parameter. We create a parameterized procedure, and this is the last thing, guys. You can see there's no more slides. We just have to add this one little bit to our to our procedure. So we would say inside the bracket here, we can say in. Okay, in, because it's coming into the procedure. We give it a name, okay, because we want to search for the genre, for example. The genre, that's what I'll call it, genre. And we give it the type. And we know that our genre is a varchar255. Our genre name is a varchar255. Now, instead of saying genre.name equals philosophical, we can say genre.name equals genre, that little parameter there. And we can define that parameter over here. Okay, so call get books on philosophical. Philosophical, this genre becomes philosophical. And then we say genre.name equals genre. And there we go. Now it'll search for all the philosophical books. If we wanted to search for the fantasy books, we would say fantasy over here, like that. And now it'll search for the fantasy books. If we wanted to search for the fiction books, we can just change that to fiction. And there we go. We have a parameterized procedure, which is a lot like a parameterized method inside C Sharp or a parameterized function inside JavaScript. Okay. Like, for example, if you remember that add numbers function we created for the website, um, where it took an A and B and added them together in JavaScript, that's the same thing. Genre is being passed into a parameter as a parameter here. It's not an integer, it's a string. So that's slightly different, but um, hopefully you guys can picture that. Okay. And I know, I'm sorry, we went four minutes over time. Um, but yeah, that is it for today. Um, there is a uh, another one of those tech roads things where you'll be able to practice SQL and it's got like a whole IDE where you'll program and it'll give you little challenges and you'll go through it. It's exactly like last week's tech roads thing. Last week's one was about helping Tembi um, create that mobile application database. This week it's about a coronavirus kind of inspired thing. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for coming. Thank you, Chris. Uh, enjoy your weekends. I'll post that Tech Roads link on the on the WhatsApp group for you guys to practice. Uh, please do work through that. Taffy Chico, do catch up with what you missed. Tejo as well, if you're watching the YouTube video, please do catch up because I see you disconnected, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for coming. Enjoy your weekends. And yeah, see you next weekend for our last lecture. This was our second last lecture. Uh, next weekend, we will finish the course content entirely, okay? Um, Thank you, Josh. Uh, yeah, thank you, Clark. Cheers. Enjoy your weekend. Say um, bye, everyone. Okay, sir. Bye. Bye. -bye.